Hello and welcome to our newest segment of Job One here at UCSD TV at, at the UCSD Extension. Thank you for joining us. And we've got a very interesting um, guest and topic today, and it's really around technology and engineering. And half the people run away screaming from that field as a career choice, and the other half love it and are passionate about it and can't get enough of it. And so today I've got Svet Marich joining me. And Svet is the Director of Engineering and IT Programs at UCSD Extension. But what I want to talk to Svet about, welcome to the, to the show, so it's nice to have you. As I said, some people love technology and engineering and go toward it, and then we're going to talk about women in STEM and young girls becoming interested in it. And the other half goes screaming away for it's not for me, I can't do it, I can't do it. And they can. Tell us a little bit about career paths in, in IT and, and technology and engineering these days? So I think it's, it's very interesting to see, especially when you go to high schools and uh, we offer after hour programs in engineering uh, and we have a lot of interest in those, but it's always a little bit disappointing to see that we have a very uh, small particip participation in, uh, from the women in high school, from the young, young women in high school. And these are high school level yes. classes you're talking yes. about these after are, school at high school. These are after hour programs meant to introduce the high school uh, students what to expect when they go to the engineering field. Because what we see at UCSD is that people say, oh yeah, I want to study engineering. Then they go to an engineering program and they suddenly realize that that's not for them. And so we've been trying to help the high schools uh, and, and the students in high schools understand better what studies in engineering entail. And it was always disappointing to see that we don't have enough women, even in high school, already in high school attendees uh, after our classes. And, and, and what's so your sense of why that is? Uh, so we really need to change the mindset, not only of the students, but also of the parents. Mm -hmm. and. As you said in the beginning, there is nothing too difficult about technology and about engineering. And it's a little bit of math, but it's very interesting. Uh, you know, all the video games, if you want to play video games, if you want to code, uh, that's something that every one of us can do and uh, it's very interesting to most of us. There is no reason why any high school girl would not be able to do it as well as a high school boy, on the contrary. I mean, let's get into the sort of mindset, and it's interesting you mentioned the parents because that's obviously a huge influence. And uh, those of us in the career transition coaching business think parents ought to be encouraging their daughters to go into that field because people are searching for females to join their team that are engineering. So the job opportunity is huge. What? Um, why do you think parents and/or the girls? are shying away from the field? Well, I heard once when, we were, uh, when I was giving a talk uh, at an engineering school in um, uh, San Luis Obispo, well, um, one thought is that a lot of young ladies, women, like to help people one-on-one. -on -one. That's why you have a lot of women in sciences, in nursing, and in doctors especially. Uh, but I think that with the new programs, for instance, that we have, and UCSD proper has in machine learning, uh, in big data, in data sciences, where you can apply all of this, for instance, to the health industry, uh, to the industry of uh, adult uh, population. That's something that will be an obvious way to help people. And that's, I think, the way we should go with all these new technology fields to interest them uh, in that area. If, if I'm a young person or a parent maybe and and I and I like doing these sort of things we sort of joked about playing video games yeah. um, what should I what should I look like that I feel like I I enjoy doing it and I feel like I'm good at it that lead me to really research a technology or an engineering career path? What, what should I look for? And then we're going to ask what the opposite of that. But what if I do what well and I enjoy doing it, 
Well, the first thing, unfor the unfortunate answer to this is that you still have to enjoy the basic math. Okay. And, but I think it rests on the high school math teachers to show to the kids that it's easy. There is nothing too complicated in math that they would not be able to learn especially if they want to be in the technology field. And does this start in Algebra 1 and 2? Or what, it is what? Algebra 1 and 2 basic calculus that uh, everyone can get if it is presented in a proper way, which unfortunately often is, it isn't. And uh, you know, once you have a little bit of knowledge of math, then you can study things that are of interest to you. You know, maybe just programming will do for your machine learning basics. Or maybe if you're interested in some mechanical engineering, we have some very nice courses, hands-on courses in mechanical engineering that teaches you how to design an NFL football helmet. Um, you don't need to know everything about mechanical engineering, but uh, to be proficient in some specific areas. So if I like doing, I mean, my, let's get back to the video games. Is that a good sign that I'm a technology geek and I would make a good engineer or a programmer or IT or... I can't uh, necessarily tell you that you will be a fantastic engineer <laughs> if you're good at playing video games. But I would encourage you to take, for instance, some coding boot camps that we have, and that in six months will enable you to become a, to find a, a job in a coding company. Is that how long it takes, six yes. months? Yes, yes. And can someone, if they did well in math in high school, and take a six month coding class, is that a, enough for a career path into a job? Uh, yes, I think it would be good enough for a starting career, a starting point in a, in a coding engineering company. How far into the six-month class would I realize this is really fascinating and I'm, I'm becoming addicted to it versus, I remember my chemistry class in high school, the first day I was lost and just got more lost and knew that I was not going to do anything in a career that had anything to do with chemistry. I think a lot of the shy away from coding is, oh, that's, you've got to know a lot of stuff from backgrounds. You've got to be good at doing all these things with the computer and fixing them and all that sort of stuff. How, how, how fast would I know if I'm I think after the it? first two classes, so within a week, you, sh you will know that this is within not. Within a week? Yes, okay. it's not in a, that's not for you. Because there are a lot of homeworks, there are a lot of projects that you have to do, a lot of tinkering with the computer. So if you are not able to start running a basic program, you will know immediately this is not for you. Um, but this is a great opportunity for people that want to change their careers into technology, maybe if they left the military, right, uh, or they want to change their careers, mm -hmm. a six-month coding program would give them a good opportunity to do so. And is that six, eight hours a day for six months, or um, what, what's the time commitment? It is twice a week, uh, twice a week for three hours each uh, session. And then we have, uh, on Saturdays, we have uh, project presentations, career services, uh, the whole uh, package in, within those six months. And this is for adults or is this is your after school uh, this, is for adults. this is for adults. So I could certainly dip my toe into it and, and keep my current job. That's correct. Um, to, test, to test that field. And then if I tend to do well at coding and become very interested and passionate about it, going on for an engineering degree, is that, or a programming? What, what's the next step if I do well at coding boot camp? So the idea of these coding boot camps, and by the way, we also have uh, cybersecurity boot camps, is to give you a foot in a company that is hiring this type of uh, people. And then if you want to further study, you have a background for that as well. Yeah, we're sitting here in the Manpower Building and half of this building is the Nest, which is cybersecurity innovative companies that, that rent desks or offices or space or a, a kid about a seat on a couch. Um, so this building is full of people in cybersecurity and they just are fascinated what they're doing. I mean, there's so much energy around that field right now. It, it is very interesting because there are two, two approaches to cybersecurity. One, one is to learn how to defend against attacks, 
And the other one is how to actually attack. <laughs> I was going to say, and, how uh, diplomatic are you going to be with how to attack? Yes. Yeah, so, that was pretty, uh, pretty to the point there, wasn't it? Yes. So I think that's a very interesting field as well that uh, people can find themselves uh, employed. So if engineering or IT or cybersecurity or coding have sort of scared you off as that's not on land and I don't understand, they're speaking a whole different language, there's lots of opportunities to dip your toe into it and take a, an extension class or, or take this six hours a week for six months and some Saturdays and, and open up a whole entire different career path for yourself. And if you love that class, keep doing it and build your career. So don't run away from IT and cybersecurity and coding and engineering because it sounds like a voodoo language. Be sure and check it out because as a career coach, I'm telling you, those are the growth fields. And, and we talked about healthcare, and if you don't want to be a doctor or a nurse, there's still thousands of jobs around healthcare. It's the same with engineering, it's the same with cyber security. So consider this as a, as a path, and at least research it, because it is one of the fastest growing areas in the United States right now. So Seth, thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting and, me. Um, we all learned a lot about, about these fields and how to get into them. And thank you for joining us here at Job One. I'm Phil Blair, and on behalf of UCSD TV Extension, we appreciate you joining us and look forward to you for our future segment.